Darcy Lynn, America's sweetheart and AGT winner, just turned 18 years old. At this milestone in life, we spoke to her and her mother Misty about what she's learned from fame so far, her hopes for the future, and, of course, that audition. Having those people, like those 3,000 people and the judges, just give me a standing ovation and stand up for me and actually celebrate me. I mean, I just felt, it was just, it was like a feeling like no other. I was like, wow. <laughs> I, these people appreciate ventriloquism as much as I do right now. And it was just, it was the coolest feeling ever. And that is truly when everything started, the whole journey. As keen as we all are to know about Darcy's future, we have to start this right back at the beginning. I think the earliest my family heard me sing was definitely around six years old, four, five, six. I was really little. When I found out Darcy could sing when she was a little girl, I looked at my husband and I was like, yes, we have a singer. <laughs> I took a natural liking to it and started singing around the house, but I would never, never, you know, as the minute I walk out the front door, I wouldn't sing. <laughs> my sister called me and, and she says, hey, um, I'm putting Cameron, that's my niece, in this little, this little pageant, a uh, very small town, little pageant. Do you think Darcy'd like to do it? And I was like, oh, probably not, but I'll ask her. And so she was like, I'll try it. I, uh, you know, there's a talent portion for these little beauty pageants. And uh, the talent portion came around and I just, I was about to go on and I just completely froze and just broke down into tears. I was bawling. I was like, I am not going on this stage. I refuse. She just was so scared. And I was like, listen, sweetie, we don't have to do it. Let's just watch your cousin. Now let's just sit here and cheer on Cameron. So we sat there and she watched a few girls do their little talent. And then I was like, okay. I told myself, I'm gonna try it. I told my mom, I was like, I wanna try it now. So I went out there and I tap danced and sang to Singing in the Rain when I was six. And then I ended up winning the whole pageant. And I just, at that point, I was like, okay, she can do it. She showed me she can do it. And I think after that, I was like, okay, well, maybe I kind of like this. Maybe this could be fun. And that's exactly how she started this whole thing. She was still super shy outside of anything, but when she would perform and get on a stage, she was just a completely different person. She met a girl in this system, her name's Larissa Bonaquisti, and she was a ventriloquist. I wanna be a cowboy sweetheart, that's the life I love the best. And Darcy would watch Larissa and just be mesmerized by her, and she's like, Mom, I have to learn to do that. Well, I wasn't gonna tell her no, she couldn't learn it, but when she came and asked me for a puppet, I told her no. And finally, her dad's like, oh my gosh, just get her a puppet for her birthday. It'll last two weeks, and then we'll be done with this, right? He gave it to her on her 10th birthday, and I've never in my life seen her so excited, and she took that puppet, and she just ran with it. The very first uh, ventriloquist performance I ever did was in this local talent show here in Edmond, Oklahoma. And I uh, ended up winning it, which, which was really cool. <laughs> that night, there was a couple in the audience that went to church the next morning and told a friend of theirs who's a professional ventriloquist. Yo, well, you're ugly. Well, I may be ugly, but at least I'm not drunk. Yeah, the dolly shoulder in the morning. <laughs> but he did it for like 30 plus years, because um, it was huge way back. And they were like, Gary, you have to see this. This little girl, she is yodeling with her mouth closed and knowing that he does ventriloquism. And he saw it, contacted my family, and my dad was like, this is fishy, and did his like internet work, work and as my dad should. And the guy, and he, Gary was legit. Gary was like, I want to teach your daughter ventriloquism and, you know, take her under my wing. And he did. I would not have won America's Got Talent without him. Never been way up. There you go, extend that's it. But with Darcy's newfound passion for ventriloquism taking off, another activity 
had to be given up. So before HET, I don't think a lot of people know this about me, but I did gymnastics. I was competitive gymnast for over six years, and I don't want to brag, but I was actually really good. She was elite gymnast at this point in her life at age nine, and she was in gymnastics 32 hours a week. And, and she, that was her thing. I really thought that's what she was going to do with her life. I really did. That was my passion. Um, Singing was just like a hobby on the side and the beauty pageants that I did. Whenever I got to be 10 and 11 and started ventriloquism, and I told my coaches, I know I was meant to be on a stage, and I've realized that now. They thought I was crazy. I, they genuinely tried to convince me not to quit gymnastics to go talk to puppets, <laughs> um, which is really fun to look back on. But gymnastics is, was a special part of my life. But as we all know, gymnastics' loss was ventriloquism's gain. Having found her calling, Darcy now needed to take her talents to a bigger audience. This is how she got really started on TV stuff. She performed at her school. Back to school conference kind of thing. Um, and uh, Edna actually flirted with one of like the basketball coaches and it was really funny. <laughs> well, they posted it on Facebook and it went viral with like 9 million views. And my neighbor calls me and she says, hey, you really should consider putting her on this show with Steve Harvey. Sheesh, it's ugly. <laughs> so that was her first TV experience. So after that, she's like, okay, mom, now, now's the big time. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and she's like, I have to go on America's Got Talent. I mean, I grew up watching the show for as long as I can remember. And before I auditioned, I had seen Paul Zerden win season 10, and he's a ventriloquist. And I saw Grace Vanderwall win, you know, uh, season 11, and she was my age. And so I, I just, I saw the ventriloquist and then this girl, and I'm like, let's put two and two together. I just want to try this. We sent in an audition, and because of contractual purposes, she couldn't do it that year because of Little Big Shots. So she had to wait a whole year which was probably really good because she got a lot better. Before AGT, the max amount of people I had performed for with ventriloquism was like 500 or like 600 people. So I went from, you know, doing this unknown, odd talent act in front of like 500 people to 3,000 people in, in California on TV. It was just, it was insane. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Darcy Lynn. Okay, and Darcy, who's that? My name's Petunia. She was so nervous. She just, she's like, Mom, I think I'm gonna throw up. I was like, No, you're not. You know what, Darcy? Just do you. You can't go wrong if you go out there and just do you. What you're gonna see? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> she just stayed Darcy. She didn't try to be anybody else. She didn't try so hard that it, it looked like she was trying too hard. She just did what she loved to do, and it just worked for her. We couldn't tell anybody for, I think it was two months, two and a half months, because that's when it was gonna air. And I was so worried about her little brother because he was nine at the time. And I was like, he's gonna tell his best friend and it's over, <laughs> but he didn't, he kept his secret. But I'll never forget what my husband said. He said, Misty, you realize when that episode airs, our lives will never be the same. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, the world is gonna know our little girl. My life pretty much changed overnight, which was crazy. And so it, with that comes, does come a lot of pressure. It, it took a little bit to, to sink in. <laughs> I've struggled a lot these last five years with kind of the weight that, wow, all these people know my name. All of these moms and dads, their kids like watch me on YouTube and they watch me on the show and they come to my shows and they're like, Darcy, they bring their own puppets and they're like, Darcy, you inspired me to try this and you inspired me to try that. And you know, one part of my brain is like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool. I did that. And then my other, the other part of my brain is like, this is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> now I feel like I have to like be perfect and, and you know, 
it's just it's been crazy um yes there are the setbacks there are the breakdowns the tiredness of, of the travel and missing your friends and being away from home you know when she first started this she's like how long do you think we'll tour mom and i was like oh my goodness Darcy, you have no idea but I can't imagine it would be more than a couple years or three years, you know, and then now we're on year five. A lot of, you know, kids my, my age will ask me, they're like, what's it like being famous? And I'm like, I don't know how to answer it, ever. You know, I don't picture myself like that, and I don't feel myself that way. I'm just kind of living my life. The big thing that I think has been a struggle is I've had lots of people or like kids my age just treat me differently, whether that's like, treat me a good differently or treat me a bad differently or just want to be friends with me just because I was on the show, just things like that have kind of stung. Not giving up childhood, but giving up aspects of my childhood, which was, you know, the normalcy that I did love was going to school for a while. And kind of giving that up as a sacrifice was really hard. But you know, I didn't go to actual high school. I still do online school, which, when, you know, sometimes I think about it and get really sad just because, you know, it's not the end of the world to not have a high school experience, but, you know, some of the best years happen in high school. And so, and I missed out on that. It's had its difficulties, but at the same time, I believe we've navigated it pretty well and have come out pretty good. And she's still just sweet Darcy. <laughs> but I wouldn't go back for the world. I've had an incredible ride and I'm only 18 and it only gets better from here. It feels like I'm just getting so old and it's just, I wrote, a, I started writing a song about it cause it's freaking me out so much. Um, but yeah, it's weird. And with Darcy now moving into writing music, not just singing it, the question is what kind of music will she make? Um, I don't know. That's kind of the big question right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out what my sound is and I'm honestly just writing what comes out of me naturally, and I still don't know quite what that is. I'm lost in a reverie, so someone wake me up when I'm finally in love. Hey. But I have been told that I'm a very old soul because I listen to just a lot of old stuff. Um, I'm a huge fan of 80s hairband rock. <laughs> But I grew up on uh, 80s rock and 80s music because my parents obviously grew up in the 80s. And so, you know, I love to cover, let's see, Bon Jovi, ACDC, Poison. I love, I love rock, so, but I don't think a lot of people know that about me. So what does the future look like for Darcy Lynn? As she enters adulthood, will she ditch the puppets for more traditional singing? As I'm getting older, you know, my passions are shifting a little bit, but ventriloquism is just, is always gonna be like a huge part of my life and and I can't change that and I don't wanna change that. But you know, I've, been, I've become super passionate about writing music and uh, singing solo with my mouth open, but that is something I do want is a, you know, a solo singing career for sure. When she came to us about ventriloquism, we were, we were like, no, you're, you're a gymnast. What are you talking about? This is your road to, to you the rest of your life to fame or whatever. Now she's coming to us, she's like, okay, I'm ready to sing and songwrite. And so how can I not support her? I mean, she's she's proven herself over and over again that when she puts her mind to it and hard work and passion, she's, she'll do it. She will, she will be successful in something. I just feel like it's in her.